Domestication. It is the process of selectively breeding a previously wild and untamed animal, and eventually, after thousands of years and hundreds of generations, producing a new species that is docile and easy for humans to take care of. This is why the tiger is wild and not domesticated, since it is so dangerous, unlike our domesticated cats, which aren't. We often hear and accept this rationale for why a tiger is not like our pet cats. Domestication is what separates a domesticated cat and a tiger, and why one is safe to handle and the other isn't. But here's the thing, that actually makes no sense at all. In order to understand why, we must first decide on what domestication is, but not even scientists can agree on a universal definition. We know for certain which animals are domesticated. Animals like dogs, chickens, goats, and even hamsters. And we know which animals are not domesticated. Animals like whales, hyenas, and great white sharks. But some animals land in a gray area. Ferrets, for instance, have often been considered to be both domesticated and not domesticated. And this status has even led to them being banned in some states. While reindeer, also known as caribou, exist in the wild. There are populations of these ungulates that have been bred in captivity for centuries and are often referred to as semi-domesticated. For many species, domestication status is unclear. It may surprise many that one of the animals that some people consider to not be domesticated, or at least there has been little change from its wild form, is the domesticated cat. Why is this so? While it is often assumed that the process of domestication leads to radical changes in an animal's appearance, which may be one reason why the captive deer populations are considered semi instead of fully domesticated, this is obviously untrue. The cat is one of the most popular animals that is considered to be domesticated, but the animal you are looking at here is not a domesticated cat. This is the African wild cat, which is the wild ancestor of the domesticated cat. As one can see, they are barely distinguishable from each other, just as is the case with domestic and wild reindeer. Another important fact to consider about domesticated cats is that while pedigree cats do exist, the vast majority of pet cats are not selectively bred, rather they are the result of free breeding animals. Just like wild animals, cats typically select their own mates. And this is why cats are considered to be self-domesticated. In fact, the most popular representative of domestication, the domesticated dog, is also theorized to have developed this way. Selectively bred dog breeds are actually only a few hundred years old, while dogs have been free breeding and self-domesticating for thousands of years. This process continues to this day. About 80% of the world's so-called domesticated dogs are free breeding, outdoor living animals called village dogs. They've been doing this for thousands of years. So what does this mean for tigers and other exotic animals that are said to not be domesticated? Dogs and cats first became domesticated without any intentional selective breeding. Merely breeding in the presence of humans led to the genetic changes that caused them to be even better adapted to living with humans. This isn't the case with tigers, of course. Tigers are not self-domesticated. However, tigers do breed well in captivity, and they've been bred in captivity for many years. It is this process that can allow captive animals to become unintentionally selectively bred, as animals that breed the best in the presence of humans are passing on those genes to their progeny more often than those which are stressed in captivity and subsequently breed less, if at all. But a tiger can't possibly be domesticated because tigers are still dangerous, right? Well, tigers are dangerous not because of their domestication status, but because they are extremely large and powerful animals. Dogs and cats are less dangerous as they have descended from much smaller animals that did not prey on large mammals like tigers do. In fact, the current evidence points to dogs descending from not the carnivorous modern wolf we are familiar with, but a smaller, less aggressive wolf that was primarily a scavenger. A tiger can be domesticated to some degree, depending on your definition of the word, but a tiger will always be dangerous due to its size alone. 
this doesn't mean that tigers cannot have genetic changes that would allow them to adapt to captivity better, just as the African wildcat eventually became the slightly different domesticated cat. We hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe if you did. And be sure to stay tuned for more interesting animal content. Thanks for watching.